The following message is brought to you by Morning Star Christian Center, Worry. We want to look at how to find the right person to marry. I hope you came with your writing materials. How to find the right person to marry. Now, you know that there are several decisions that we need to make in life. There are several decisions that we need to make in life. In fact, three very crucial decisions. Number one is a decision to make Jesus the Lord of our lives. The decision to come out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light is the first most crucial decision anybody can ever make. And so if you're here tonight, you've not made that change, you've not made that transition and you are still living under the powers of darkness, you are still living in sin, I want you to know that that is the first and most crucial decision you need to make, to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Then the second crucial thing that every young person must decide on or discover is your purpose for living. Your purpose for living. Where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. You must discover as an individual, why am I on earth? What am I supposed to accomplish with my life? Because your life means a lot to God. And God has designed you in such a way that you were created not just to come and fill space here on earth. You were created to bring forth an uncommon destiny. So destiny keeps pulling you on the inside. There are times in your life where discouragement wants to come. There are times in your life where it's like, okay, let me just live a normal life. But somehow from the inside, something keeps telling you, you are more than this. You are more than this. And that's destiny pulling you and telling you, listen, your life has to be about something. And I tell you, a life that is not lived for any specific purpose is the most colossal waste of existence. The time that God has given you, the beginning of your life to the time of your death, is a moment in time that God has given you that you must maximize. Maximize the moment. Maximize your life. Don't let your life be that, you know, mere existence from day to day that's not making any difference. You know, um, some days ago, my daughter just brought a video of one lady and I was like, oh my God, there are so many different ways to make an impact with your life. And this woman was just doing just a talk, you know, but so powerful. She was not a preacher. I don't even know if she's born again, but so powerful. And I say, yes, I was going to play the video here tonight, but that would have meant canceling this beautiful drama. So I had to choose. Probably next month, we'll play that video. You find out that you need to find out what am I going to invest my life on? That's the second most crucial thing that must happen. Then the third most crucial thing is the issue of who you will marry. Marriage is so crucial that it has the capacity to help you to fulfill that purpose you have discovered or to mar it, to just scatter it. Marriage even has the capacity to make you to miss heaven if you marry the wrong person. And that is why tonight's issue is a very crucial issue. It's not something that we are joking about. It's not something we are playing about. In fact, if you've been around since we started the forum, one of the emphasis God has given us is the fact that this is not a game. We are not here to make you laugh and just say, oh, yes, yes, yes. There's something crucial because there's a life you must live. There's a destiny you must fulfill. And so we always go back to God's word because that's where wisdom comes out of. The Bible says God gives wisdom. Out of his mouth proceeds understanding. Praise God. He has reserved wisdom for the just. And I know that that wisdom is about to hit you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Now, so when you want to find a life partner, there are three places to look. There are three places to look when you want to find a life partner. And you want to find the right, right partner. Number one, you must look up. First and foremost, you want to find a life partner, you must look up. Psalm 1 to 1 verse 1. You're going to help me move very quickly in uh, locating scriptures because of time. Psalm 121 verse 1.
He says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. In locating a life partner, one of the things you must come to agree is that the help you need to locate that person proceeds from God. Anybody that marginalizes God in his life is not prepared to find the right partner. So, I must lift up my eyes onto the hills. Proverbs chapter 19. Proverbs chapter 19. Verse number 14. House and riches are the inheritance of fathers. And a prudent wife comes from who? From the Lord. Your parents, if they are very loaded, can give you houses, they can give you lands, they can give you riches. But a good wife, a sensible wife, a prudent wife, comes from only one source. And what's that source? From God. Now, so if I come to understand that it's only God that can give me a prudent wife, what that means is that I must pay attention to him. I must lift up my eyes as a matter of importance. Now, there are many people when they want to, um, uh, they get to this point of finding a life partner, they want to put God on the side as if to say, I can just look around, anybody I see like uh, Kerry just now, he's tall, he's loaded, his pocket is fat, and he's nice, he takes me to AJ every day. All right? If that's how you are going to choose, you will make a mistake. Lift up your eyes. Let prayer be an issue. Pray about this matter until you are sure. Now, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 24 that Abraham sent his servant to get a wife for his son Isaac. You remember the story. Now, this man got to Mesopotamia where he was to get the wife and the Bible says he knelt down and began to pray. The first thing he did was to pray. God, I have come to seek a wife for my master's son. And there are many girls that are going to come and I don't know how to choose. I don't have the wisdom. I don't have the wherewithal to choose. God, you must help me to choose. Listen, listen, you know that God cannot be mocked. Amen. If you are going to go to him with this, let it not be that I didn't pray. Let me just pray one kind of prayer. No, it has to be a heartfelt. It has to be something that you are sincere about. That I really need God to help me in this regard. Failing to look up is planning to fail. Praise God. And so that servant prayed. You will say, well, it wasn't the servant that was getting married now. It was Isaac. But listen, the Bible says as they got the wife and they were going back, from a distance, the wife on the donkey saw Isaac. And The Bible was so careful to note that Isaac was meditating in the field at the eventide. In other words, this guy, even though somebody had gone to look for a wife for him, he was in the place of prayer. Amen? He was in the place of prayer. He was saying, God, let this man not just go and bring one careless girl for me, please. Father, I'm just praying that you will guide him. I'm praying that you will help him. In other words, the first place to insist As you want to know the will of God for your life is the issue of prayer. Praise God. Now, so if you are a Christian who got born again and you have not learned how to pray and receive from God, you see that that's an issue. That's why one of the things you must do as a Christian is to learn how to pray. So number one, you look up. Number two, look inward. To find the right partner for yourself, you look inward. Until you find yourself, you may not be able to find the right person. You need to write it. Until you find yourself, you may not be able to find the right person. Self-discovery precedes spouse discovery. Self-discovery precedes spouse discovery. For example, you want to be married... You don't even know what your vision for life is. You don't know what your purpose is. You don't know where you are going. You don't know what you want to do with your life. The other time my daughter was saying to me in the the hostel, you know, there are some girls who are like, hey, by 22 I should be married. By 22 I should be married. And she's looking at them. This girl cannot even organize her small corner in the room. She's so disorganized. 
She can't even map out her own timing for only herself now. She wants to get married. You know, there are many people who are looking at marriage. I don't know what, how, how they are looking at this marriage thing. They are looking at it as an achievement. You know, this is a trophy. This is something I have won. Now I am married. My marital status has changed. Now it's beyond a change in marital status. There has to be self-discovery. Am I an altar material? If you are not altar material, forget it. Let me tell you. The beauty about having a blissful marriage is more than getting the right person. Success in marriage is not just in finding the right person. You must also be the right person. Amen? Amen. If you find a good person, a right person, and you are not a right person, the thing will scatter. So before you even begin to make moves or say, I need to find the person, check inwards. Look inwards. So the things you need to begin to ask, for example, check in the area of, am I spiritually prepared for marriage? Am I spiritually prepared for marriage? Because somebody was saying something. That there are some people that all their lives, they have fought battles in their lives. Then they are now going to marry somebody who is also having battles. Now, battle has intensified. If you are not spiritually ready, you are not ready for that. So you want to ask yourself, am I emotionally ready for marriage? If you are that kind of person right now, you find it difficult to forgive people. And you want to get married. Oh my God. This is calamity in the making. You can't forgive. Even your younger sister that offended you, you have kept that thing in your heart. You bag issues. You keep them in words. You are keeping them. You are saying this thing, ah, until we reach heaven before Jesus go, go, go settle this matter. I dare say you won't get to heaven. You remember what Jesus was teaching one day? He said, when you pray, in case you have anything against anyone, what must you do? Forgive. If not, your heavenly father will not forgive you. So you want to get married. You don't find it easy to forgive. You always have mood swings. You are not emotionally ready. So then you are happy. Oh, when everything is going well, you are happy. When things are not going so well, you are sad. Tomorrow I'm so depressed. Next tomorrow I'm just so happy. So what you need to ask yourself, this mood swings, how is it going to work with somebody else in the equation? There are some people you are never sure what to expect with them. You met them yesterday and everything was nice. Today you meet them and you are like as if they didn't even know you before. So you need to check, am I emotionally ready? Am I emotionally ready? Am I that kind of person that, you know, I, 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 I get irritated by little things? Am I that kind of person that is given to jealousy? Oh, I checked in my Bible. Jealousy is not the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? One girl was telling me the other time, she was going out with one guy. And then the guy he got in church one day and the, the guy was sitting somewhere. She was sitting something. At the end of the service, the guy came and said, Hey! Hey! Hmm. So you went to church. See the way you were staring at that man. Which man? I didn't even notice anybody sitting me. Hey, you are a liar. I'm telling you, you are a liar. And she was, she was on this altar. She was talking to me. And I asked, are you going to marry that man? He said, mm, I know that he has mental depression. But God has asked me to go in there and heal him. I said, okay. I talked and talked and talked. And you know, there are some people that, you know, there's this um, worldly proverb that they normally say, say whom the gods will make mad. So who the gods will destroy, they first make mad. There's some people that you are even telling them, this thing will not work. Look, they will never hear you. So you are asking yourself in looking inwards, what's my purpose? What's my dream? Where am I going with my life? It's not just about getting married, getting married. Your life has to be about something. Have you captured that thing for which Jesus captured you? What is that thing that your life is about? So it's not sufficient to just sit down and say, I'm just waiting to be married, I'm waiting to be married. Okay, after marriage, what next? So you need to check inwards, amen? Self-discovery precedes spouse discovery. 
Praise God. And you know why it's good to, for self-discovery? Is that eventually, the person you will marry has to fit into the direction you are going. Amos 3.3 3 says, Can two work together except they agree? So if where I'm going does not correspond with where you want to go, then there's no way that this thing is going to work. That's why it's important. And for all of you, brothers and sisters here, who have a sense of calling by God, you know that there's a higher thing that God wants to do with your life. I want to challenge you more especially. Don't be careless. Don't be careless. Many of the divorces we see among ministers today is that kind of carelessness that brought it about. They knew God wanted to use them, but they were not careful in picking a life partner. You cannot go in that direction. Amen? So number two, self-discovery. Look inwards. Tell your neighbor you need to look inwards. Number three, look around. So number one, look upwards. Number two, look inwards. Number three, look around. And I found out that God will not put that person you are to marry very far from you. One of the revelations you must catch tonight is that God is in charge of human traffic. God is in charge of human traffic. And he knows how to make this person just, you see, there's a divine movement. That somehow, this person moved like this, person moved like this, and there's a collision at some point. God is in charge of that. And so, in exercising your faith in finding the right partner, you must also have this understanding that God knows how to move the whole thing so that we will meet each other. But you know what I found out out of scriptures? You know, there are detailed stories of how some people got married in scriptures. One of the things I found out is that for most of those people, go and check your Bible when you get home, you will find out that there was a specific place where most of them met their spouses. They met at the well. Amen? When they went to get a wife for Isaac, where did they see Rachel? At the well. She came to draw water. Moses ran away from Egypt and he goes to Midian. Where did he find his wife? At the well. And you will see example after example after example of people meeting their partners at the well. So what you want to ask me is, Pastor, where is the well? <laughs> so that I can quickly run there, man. Maybe I'll just see the girl there tonight. Help me tell your neighbor, right here you are at the well. The well is the place of the drawing of water. Am I right? And the Bible says that the word of God is water. That he might cleanse him by the washing of water by the word. That is to say the place of the well is the place of the word. Amen. That is to say that for every child of God, the likely place you will find the person to marry is not on Facebook. It's at the well, sir. Praise God. And the well is the church. Amen. The well is the church. It could be your local church. It could be a gathering like this. But the well is the church. Now, so listen. That is to say... Oh, I need to give you scriptures. Open your Bible. The place of the well. Look at um, Psalm 92. Psalm 92. Have you found Psalm 92? Look at verse 13. Let's start from verse 12. Can we all read from verse 12? Want to read. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. Are you the righteous tonight? Okay, say, I shall flourish like the palm tree. I shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Then let's read verse 13 together. Everybody read. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. That is to say, listen to me. 
you want to find the right person, you cannot constantly be a visitor in your church. There are some of you, you have never committed to any local assembly. You've never really gotten involved. You are like a visitor. But the Bible says the people that flourish in the courts of our God are people that are planted. Their feet are planted at this well. Their feet are planted. It is wrong for you as a child of God that you just go to church, no involvement, no commitment. No, no, you are not adding anything to what's going on in church. Those that are planted in the courts of the Lord, those are the ones that will flourish like a cedar in Lebanon. So what's the point? The point is that I want to find the right person, but what I need to ask myself, am I planted by this well? Am I planted by this well? So listen, when a person decides to say, okay, I know that the well is the place to get good wives. So I'm going to that church. You know, I like the way Pastor Vera teaches and I know that she will have taught all those girls. So I go get good wife for them. And you yourself, you are not planted. You are just a come and go person. And you come, even if you pick a good girl who didn't take time to pray, she made mistake and followed you. Do you know that that marriage cannot work? Can two work together? Except they agree. If my pursuit in life and my values are different from yours, there is no way our marriage will work. One of the things I've enjoyed consistently in my marriage for the past 24 years is the fact that we have the same values. We have the same values. I go to preach all the time in different places. And my husband carries me there many times. And he will park his car. He won't even enter the church. He'll wait for me in the car. I finish preaching. He carries me again. We go home. Um, some evenings ago, I think that was Thursday. Thursday evening. I went by myself with Onos. As I got home, he was outside waiting for me as he usually does. Amen. See, it is easy to submit to a man that loves you. You want your wife to submit to you married people? Love her so crazily that she will have to be a mad woman not to submit. Praise God. Now, so I get home that evening and he's outside waiting for me. And the nurse is stretching his hand to carry my hand back. And the nurse said, I just put my head on his shoulder. I said, I beg you too much. Shut up, he shouts. <laughs> Praise God. So you find out, you want to find the right person. What you need to do is to ask yourself, Am I planted? Am I planted? Are my roots deep? And you must constantly be at the place of the well. So there are some people that all you do is to go to church on a Sunday morning. That's it for the week. You are not constantly at the place of the well. You must be at the place. Imagine that that servant came that day. And that was the day that Rachel decided not to come and fetch water. Would have missed something. But she was constantly at the well. They say, don't worry, don't worry. The, her daughter, the person you are asking for, the daughter will soon be here. And truly, she showed up. I was telling somebody some days ago, do you know when I get to church, even as a pastor, there are some people that I know I will see in church. I know I will see them. So even if they are not in church, eh, it's like something is missing. Does it happen to you sometimes? It happens to me as a pastor. It's like something is missing. But may I announce to you that the true value of any man it's not just that he's saying I'm valuable. The true value of a man's life is what will be missed by your absence. If you are not there and nobody misses you, Kai, I tell you, you are not planted. That you didn't come to church for two weeks and nobody even knew you were not in church. It's a bad thing. They are not even going to church for one month. They are not even going to find me. Find you for what? No, find you for what? Even if you came, what would you have contributed? Some of you said, you are a discouragement to pastor's anointing. <laughs> because they say, say amen. You do like this. The pastor will be asking, ah, am I sure the anointing is flowing tonight? <laughs> Praise God. 
All right, so you need to look around. First of all, look up. Secondly, look in was thirdly look around. All right. Those are three things. Then I move to the next step. What are now the steps to discovering the specific person? Because you are reading your Bible, you find out that there's no place that says, My son Joshua, go and marry Lori, uh, Laura. There's no place. Did you see in your Bible? Go and marry Laura. So if it's not in the Bible and God wants me to marry the right person, how do I navigate? Three steps. Number one, are you ready to write? Number one step is that you have a correct heart disposition. You must have a correct heart disposition. Number two, discern God's leading. Number one, have a correct heart disposition. Number two, discern God's leading. And number three, secure the agreement of the second party. Number one, have a correct heart disposition. Number two, discern God's leading. And number three, secure the agreement of the second party. So first of all, let's talk about having a correct heart disposition. Under that, we'll talk about, um, about four points. So A, in getting a correct heart disposition to locate the right person you want to marry, get involved, get involved or busy with the work of the kingdom. A correct heart disposition. Get involved with the work of the kingdom. You know Jesus was teaching in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, right? And his righteousness, what will happen? Every other thing including marriage will be added. So, but when you sit down and say, no, 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 no. This marriage matter, God must settle and before I do any other thing, you are wrong. Get busy with the affairs of the kingdom. Get busy with God's agenda. There are some people that in their churches, they will not go for singles program. They will not go for youth program. And they are saying, ah, I, I'm not yet married. I'm too old to be going for singles. So you are not a single. You are not a, a married. Are you a bat? <laughs> what are you? You must be one. Praise God. Get so involved. I remember when I wasn't yet married. Although I married young. But you see, it never occurred to me that people used to pray about marriage. I'm telling you the truth. Never occurred to me. Because we were too busy. We were just too busy. With the youth fellowship, going out for outreaches, we were too busy praying. We were just too busy for that to be an issue for us. May I announce to you that if your life is not busy with God's agenda, you are just sitting there and saying, my life partner, my, you, you are wasting time. You are wasting time. Especially when you are young, is the time to actually find where you fit in the body of Christ. Everything I'm doing now, I did, I'm doing now because I found something when I was yet a single person. In 1987, 88, I took out time, actually three days of fasting, and I just went to God. With only one request for those three days. God, I don't want to assume because I read English education, I must teach. What is your purpose for my life? What am I supposed to be doing? How am I supposed to contribute to your agenda? And was at that time God began to show me many of the things I'm beginning to see at this time in my life. And so when I came to town and joined the local church, oh my God, you couldn't keep me away from church. How can you keep me away from church? So there were some brothers who came to marry me and I just asked them one, two, three questions and I just dismissed them from there. Because I knew it was not going to work. I mean, this person wants uh, uh, joint business, will be doing business, will be traveling up and down. Business? That's not my purpose in life. There was even one brother that I was even liking already. I'm, in fact, I was liking him. Should I confess the truth? I was really liking him. And my friend was laughing one day because we went to church office and the brother also came and you know, because I knew the brother was going to be there, I wore high heels that day. <laughs> I know what some of you sisters are doing. You think, we did it too. <laughs> ah, you don't know that we did it. So the brother was walking behind me. I was just going, going. 
So my friend, my friend was saying, Vera, see as your step change. <laughs> Praise God. No, but we were spiritual. <laughs> we were spiritual. <laughs> Amen. Now, so you, so that very brother, now works offshore, was working offshore at that time. He was he was doing very well. Among God, he's one of the few, few people who had a car. But I liked him. Now, when he traveled, and he liked me to visit back and forth. Now, when he went offshore, he now called one. He said, where are you? I said, I'm on my way for Sunday school teacher's class. He said, ha. If anything, by the time we marry, we'll come consider all this going to church. Ah! Consider waiting. That was the end of the matter. Are you listening to me? Listen to me. The fact is this. Your life must be plugged into God's agenda. Go and read your Bible. When God began to give Joseph the dream, because many times people talk about Joseph and they are saying from, uh, from uh, 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 prison to palace. Go and check the distance that that guy went. When God started showing him those purpose for his life, the Bible says, I was in the harvest field and we were harvesting and we tied the sheep. You remember that dream? What was God saying? Your purpose and your dream must be tied to the harvest. If your life is not tied to God's last day's harvest, I tell you, it's, it will be hard. Praise God. So get busy about the things of God. That's number one. Number two, developing a heart, a correct heart disposition. So listen, when you are sitting at home, you are pressing your, your phone money till night, you are wasting time. You are wasting precious time. How many of you here are less than 20? You are less than 20. Let me see your hand. You are here tonight and you are less than 20. Only two of you. Three. Four. Five. Less than 26. Very few. So the rest of you more than 20. That is to say there is nobody too young here to just plug himself into what God is doing. Nobody. The point at which you discover God's mandate for your life is when you are young, not when you are my age. By the time you get to my age, it's already getting too late. Praise God. So, um, so you get busy with the things of God. B, B, under developing a correct heart disposition is to go to sleep. You need to go to sleep. Sleep. The deep sleep principle means that God came to Adam. He wants to give him a wife. The Bible says, and he caused a deep sleep to come upon Adam and he slept. Adam agreed to sleep. What that means is that you must cease from all your troubles, from all your struggles regarding the issue of choosing. Cease from all this self-effort. Cease from all this restlessness in your spirit. And let me tell you, sisters, one of the things that happen that make you to become restless is that you are listening too much to what people are saying. We are living in a society that is so hell-bent on making single people feel intimidated. You are a single person, you are minding your business and somebody just comes. If that's not even close, you know, worry, yeah? your husband will soon come. What does that mean? I tell you that I'm searching for a husband everywhere I go. I mean, they put people under pressure under pressure and they make it seem as if because you are not yet married something is wrong with you there is nothing wrong with you because you are not yet married praise God if not the, the, the greatest person somebody, something was wrong with would have been Jesus Christ followed by his best apostle Paul they didn't get married but everything was right with them amen I said amen, amen. so one of the things that rob people of sleep this deep sleep in God is this worry and restlessness because you are listening to what people are saying. The time, the timing for your marriage and the timing from your friend's marriage are not likely to be the same. So that you got a friend who married at the age of 24 is not to say you must marry at 23. Praise God. Giddy, 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 don't miss an I go first walk. 
And I came and I considered under the sun that the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. And this food we are eating is not to men of great understanding. But time and chance. One translation says it happens by being at the right place at the right time. You will be at the right place at the right time. What it means is that I must rest. I must rest. I must come to the point where this matter of my marriage, I have put it in the hand of God and I am not going to become restless about it. I'm not going to keep cracking my brain so how my husband will come be safe. So when you see Charles, somebody was telling me, say, say, I have a very funny roommate. The roommates will just come back one day, say, I met a guy today. And you know we exchange phone number. Just wait, just wait. He will soon phone me. He will soon phone me. I mean, some people are crazy. So, so, so they are waiting, they are waiting. The boy said, okay. He told me that he's going for a meeting. Maybe the meeting just kept him busy. I mean, when you get to the point where everybody you meet is a likely candidate, you are in trouble already. You will make mistake. May I announce to you that not even everybody you meet in church is marriable. Eh? So go to sleep. Help me tell your neighbor you need to go to sleep. Number C, under this, <laughs> developing the correct at uh, disposition, don't set idols in your heart. If you want to find the right person, don't set idols in your heart. Don't set idols in your heart. The children of Israel came to God through the prophet Ezekiel. And God said to Ezekiel, go and tell them that whatever they've come to ask, I will answer them according to the idols in their heart. What does that mean? Please, don't, if you want to find the right person to marry, don't set standards. Leave those details to God. Some people, eh, they are more container conscious than content conscious. You must become content conscious, not container conscious. One man uh, uh, came to me the other time. He said, I beg, there are very beautiful girls in your church. Can you help me find a wife? I said, really? He said, I want one that is, you know. He was describing here like this, describing when it gets. And at that time, he was, he was a widow, an old man. I said, no wonder they say a fool at 40. He's a fool forever. When you become more container conscious than content conscious, you are not planning for a successful marriage. So when you say standard, you know, she has to be very, very slim. She has to be lepacious. Then she has to be figure eight. Then she should just be walking. And when she just passed, everybody will say, that's his wife. And I'll say, yes. You have missed it since day before yesterday. <laughs> so don't set standards. If there's any standard you will set, look at the wisdom of that man in Genesis 24. The girls of this city, they are coming to fetch water. Please, the one that I will say, give me water to drink. And she will say, I will not only give you, I will also fetch for your camels. Let that be the girl. In other words, I'm looking for a girl with character. I'm looking for a girl with the fruits of the spirit. Praise God. I'm not looking for external things. Excuse me, may I announce to you, the person you marry is not the person you will live with. If you are looking for a container. Because as spotish as you are looking, when you marry within some years, the shape will change. Are you listening to me? So if a person marry you now because of your shape, there's already a problem. There is nobody who will retain their shape forever. You can't marry because of shape. Amen? There's one brother some years ago who told me, Pastor, hmm, I can never marry a black girl in my life. I don't want... When I see black girls, I, 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 no, Pastor, I will not marry a black girl. The girl has to be fair like Amanda. Very fair like this sister here. Praise God. I said, that's the girl. So I just laughed. I said, my dear, why don't you calm down? 
Just go to God and tell him, God, I need a wife. He said, How, house and riches are given by fathers, but a good wife, a sensible wife, let God give you a sensible wife. So he let it die. And then he buried all his desires in God. He said, but pastor, you know, uh, does the Bible not say, uh, 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 the Lord will give me the desires of my heart? I know some of you are already thinking like that. But you know if you are quoting that scripture, you are quoting it wrong. Read the whole scripture. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. In other words, I must make God my desire. I must bury my desire in his desire. Praise God. I said praise God. So you know what happened with that brother? After some time... He came and said, Pastor, I have found the person. Praise the Lord. I have found the person. I said, wow, wow, wow. Who is the person? And lo and behold, she was the blackest girl in the church. Ah, ah. The first question I asked him, I said, you know, go marry Oyibo again? He said, Pastor, Oyibo na childishness at the talk that time. This is the real thing. Listen, color is only skin deep. You can't marry because of color. Amen. You can't marry because of physical appearance. It's a favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. A woman who fears the Lord, that's the one to praise. That's the one to marry. A woman who fears the Lord. Praise God. Now so, when you want to find the right person, you must Number one, get busy about the things of God. Number two, don't set idols in your heart. No, go to sleep. Number three, don't set idols in your heart. Then finally, number four, wait on the Lord, trusting him with all your heart. Proverbs chapter three, verse five. Wait on the Lord, trusting him with all your heart. Wait on the Lord, trusting him with all your heart. Verse five of Proverbs three, say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Can you give it to us in message? Verses 5 and 6. Message. Please, can we all read it? Want to read? Don't try. Don't even try. Trust God from the bottom. I like it. From the bottom, not be here, not be peripheral trust, bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Don't try it. You will make a mistake. Verse 6. Hello, read it like people who have some energy. If you listen to his voice in everything you do, everywhere you go, he will make sure you are on the right track to pick the right person. You will be on the right track to pick the right person. But if everything, you feel that you have wisdom, you feel that you can do it on your own, you, you are calculating. The worst mistake to make is to go and marry somebody because you feel that that person is from a good family. The family may be good, the person may not be good. Praise God. Trust God with all your heart. Alright, so number one, you develop a correct heart disposition. Then number two, we said that you must discern God's will. The leading of the Holy Spirit. You must develop such a sensitivity to the Spirit of God. How do I do that? Number one, you must be, have a personal acquaintance with the revealed general will of God. Some people want to get married. They don't even know the general revealed will of God concerning marriage. For example, one of the general revealed will of God concerning you when you want to choose, you shall not marry an unbeliever. Do you know some people see that they argue with God right there? Why? You know there are some of you, everything God says, why? Why? As if God has to answer you before you will obey him. Why? And you begin to ask yourself, why did God say marriage to an unbeliever is 
forbidden. You remember the wise man Solomon? There was no man wiser than that man. Both before him and after him. Whom God made wise in all things. But where did he miss it? He married the daughters of strange gods. And the Bible says when he was old, his wives turned away his heart from following God. So you need to know God's revealed will. I can't marry an unbeliever. I can't marry a married person. God's revealed will. I can't marry somebody who just got born again yesterday like Charles. This, this boy got born again yesterday. Or this young man rather. Got born again yesterday. And yet it's on God. He has even given his life to the cross. <laughs> mistake. Allow him to grow. He's a spiritual babe and children don't get married. Amen? Marriage is for men, not for boys. Praise God. In, um, then you have to know that God will lead you through the inner witness. You know what the inner witness is? You see, as many as um, are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Now, we are living in a city called Worried and is so blessed. Unfortunately, we are also blessed with a lot of false prophets. Listen and listen up. If you have any question on this, ask me right away. Don't leave the issue of the choice of who you should marry to any man of God. Don't leave the issue of who you should marry to a prophet. It is wrong for you to go to a prophet and say, prophet, come and choose who I should marry. It's wrong. It is wrong. In the Old Testament, the prophets were called seers. The reason that people went to them in the Old Testament is the fact that the Spirit of God was not indwelling the people. The Spirit of God only came occasionally upon certain persons, the kings, the priests, and the prophets. So if anybody wanted to know the mind of God, they needed to go to the seer. Then the seer would throw their urim and tumim and find out what God was saying. But under the New Testament dispensation, we have the Spirit of God. Amen? And if I have the Spirit of God, then I can, on my own, carry myself into the presence of Jehovah. I can ask him and he will speak to me. He said, you shall hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. My sheep hear my voice. And the voice of a stranger, they will not follow. I will guide you with my eyes. God is committed to guiding his people. And the one number one way by which God guides every one of us is through the inner witness. What is the inner witness? The inner witness is in your, because you are a spirit being, in your spirit, and God is a spirit being, in your spirit is where God begins to give you the green light, to give you direction. All of a sudden, you find out that that very person, anytime you think about this person, there is a peace settling on the inside. And your heart keeps going out to that person. Now, please listen to me, listen to me. Because God says, by an answer or peace, I will guide you. Now, don't be, let it be by force peace. So people that go do the peace by force. Ah, pastor, I have peace, I have peace. I have peace. How do you know the peace of God? You know the peace of God because the peace of God does not uh, reduce. Rather, it intensifies over time. That's why I see people, when they come to me, you just met somebody, the person just proposed one month ago, and you want to marry now, I say no. Give it time. Amen? Still be checking in your heart. By the inward witness, the spirit of God, the Bible says the spirit of God bears witness with our spirits. In your spirit, the spirit of God will be bearing witness that this is the person, this is the person. Inside you will know. Sometimes they will ask you, how do you know? I don't know how I know, I just know. Praise God. I said praise God. And then of course, God can also guide you through dreams, through visions, through prophecies. Now, in guidance through dreams, visions, and prophecies, you need to be a bit careful. The one that is foolproof 
and fail proof is the inner witness because the devil cannot go to that realm. But dreams and visions, the devil can do things. And so what you need to check, any dream, any vision, any prophecy that contradicts the word of God is not from God. For example, you had a vision. And in the vision, you saw yourself marrying a Muslim. That vision is not from God. Because that vision contradicts the word of God. Any dream, any vision, any revelation that goes foul, counters God's word, is not from God. One girl came to me one day, Mom, ha, 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 I found the person. I said, Praise God. And she sat down, we were talking, she was describing the person. Ah, ah, sure. And I waited for her to finish. I said, Do you know this person? Ah, ah. And I thought, Papa, she, don't, she didn't know the details. I said, Do you know that this man is married? He said, I know. Ah, ah. Sure. I said, Do you know he's a Muslim? He said, I know. Ah. I said, So how is God now speaking to you? He said, You know what God told me? God told me that he married the wrong person. That I am the real wife. And when I marry him, I will now convert him to become a Christian. The devil has arrived. I'm telling you, the devil has come. Any dream, any vision that contradicts the word of God, throw it away. Praise God. If any so-called man of God gives you a prophecy that is against God's word, throw it away. That's how one small girl just three girl. One prophet came and said, that girl must marry one junior prophet in the church. Junior prophet, one unlearned person who is just wearing garments. And he told the mother that if this girl doesn't marry this boy, whether the mother or the girl, somebody will die. Put them under such, excuse me, there is a spirit of witchcraft going on in the churches. Any spirit that seeks to manipulate anybody is the spirit of witchcraft. You are getting tired of a church. And you want to leave. And the pastor said, if you leave, ha, the spiritual umbrella under you is broken. I'm telling you, you will come under a cause threatening in our water. Nothing they happen. I'm telling you, nothing they happen. The cause, costless cannot come. Anybody that wants to use spiritual jingoism to put you in line is practicing the spirit of witchcraft. That's manipulation. Praise God. And so this girl, when they packaged this girl, was it just three? They packaged this girl from school and went to marry this guy. Pastor Wei was telling us in one of these meetings that as we are speaking now, of course the marriage scattered. The mother of the girl died. Everything sees Dabaru. Meanwhile, the girl's life, her mates now are graduates, but she's still struggling with life. Listen, it is not anybody that calls itself a man of God as a man of God. By their fruits, you will know them. Every authentic man of God, when you listen to him, one thing that must happen is that they must lift your heart towards God. Anybody that's trying to pull him, you, towards himself is not of God. Praise God. He said, even when the spirit of God comes, he will not testify of himself. He will come and testify of Christ. Praise God. Alright, so you need to... Um, there's dreams, there's visions, there's revelation. And if a prophecy comes, let me tell you something about personal prophecies. Prophecy, whether even regarding marriage or anything. For a child of God... A personal prophecy comes to a child of God only as a confirmation. Nobody should just come to you and say, hey, what's your name, baby? Mary. Mary, God is just showing me that you must marry Isaiah. Isaiah it is. From the beginning, so it was, ever shall be Isaiah. <laughs> Listen, if God did not show you Isaiah before, forget that prophecy. Every prophecy must be a confirmation. If it is a fresh word and God didn't say that to you before, forget it. It's of no consequence. Praise God. I said praise God. Whereas you must honor the man and the woman of God because they carry God's anointing and God's grace for the, for the body of Christ. 
You must never allow anybody intimidate you. Amen. The word of God is so clear and so precise. Alright, so let me round up this session because there's a last segment I must get into before we go. Recognize the leading of the Holy Spirit and then finally you um, secure the agreement. I've talked about you having peace. Okay, if the thing is of God, you will have peace. But if every time you are thinking of the person, you are feeling restless, you are feeling anxiety, go and pray again. Go, if you are not resting, go and pray again. God is, if you, every time you think there's like a red light, stop, stop, forget, go and pray again and leave the matter alone. Even if you have started the relationship and in the middle, there is this check in your spirit, don't go ahead. It's God stopping you. Praise God. Then lastly, securing the agreement of the second party. You must secure the agreement of the second party. And brothers, listen to me. One girl called me some days ago. And he said that uh, there's this man that says he wants to marry her. And the man said, if you don't marry me, you go die. And the man is the pastor. And I said to her, baby, listen to me. Death, you will not die. The man is not a man of God. Forget it. And we are even shouted the most. Because I was listening to her voice. Because we are talking on phone. I was now listening to her voice. She sounded young. I said, how old are you, girl? I'm 17, ma. <laughs> ah! How old is this man? He's in his 20s. I said, forget. I said, which class are you? He said, I just finished secondary school. I said, forget it. Forget it. Total. Listen, brothers. Even if Jesus appeared to you, to marry a girl. Please, don't go in trying to secure our agreement to say, you see, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And whether in the body or out of the body, I wish not. And you are speaking King James Version. And you are, you see, and the Lord said, leave all those many things. Don't intimidate people with spiritual language. See, I like you. I prayed about it. I love you. I like to marry. Is that not simple enough? All this plan. That I just gave my life to Christ. Oh my God! You know, I've always been a very mouthy person. <laughs> One brother in the fellowship, older brother like this, I miss smoke away just the whole trust God's purpose for my life. Sure, this one just come one day and says, "Sister Vera," and incidentally, she was the one that was asked to follow me up. So, in the midst of the follow up, he's began to see some revelation. And he came to me and said, Sister Vera, you know I had a revelation. And in that revelation, we were walking together hand in hand. And we walked on that one tree. And the tree was very fruitful. And you were plucking and eating. I was plucking and eating. And the Lord said to me, behold your wife. <laughs> And me, that time I was a newcomer, 20 consigned me. I said, Brother Austin, you know what you they talk so? I know so I know no Bible law as much as you people, but I know that it was on that tree that Adam and his wife got into trouble. If I will interpret the dream from my understanding, God is saying I should never marry you because under this tree there will be trouble. You, even if God give you all those revelations, leave it alone. You cannot use spiritual manipulation to get somebody to marry you. It is not right for you to find all kinds of ways for somebody to agree to marry you. Because if you use strong persuasion to get somebody to marry you, you have to use strong persuasion to keep the person in the marriage. So secure the agreement of the second party and secure it because you have prayed, you are convinced, you go to the person, you propose to the person and then you give the person time to pray and time to also check their spirit. I think we are going to do a part two of this teaching because my time is totally finished. We'll do part two. I thought next month we were going to talk about Christian courtship and how to go about wedding. But I think we'll finish this matter next month. Let me just tie this up. It's almost six. Let me tie this up. Can we postpone it till next week? No, no, no. Ah, the sister wants to hear everything today. <laughs> Praise God.
you go and digest the one you've heard today first. We'll continue next month. But let me say this to you. Do you know that when God wanted to create man in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image. Is that what he said? After our likeness. In other words, before God created man, God spoke. God spoke. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, when God wanted to create man's marriage, he spoke again. It is not good that this man should be alone. That is to say that man is critically important to God. I want you to know that you as you are here right now, your life is critically important to God. That is one thing that must dawn on your spirit. I am valuable. I am valuable to God. It must turn on you that you are, you are highly prized by God. But do you know that as important as you are to God, the issue of your marriage is equally as important. Because in creating you, he spoke. In creating your marriage, he spoke again. That is to say that whereas I am saying, oh, Whereas I am saying, oh, it's just so wonderful to know you, Jesus. Oh, what's your purpose for my life? And I'm doing all that. I should equally know that the intensity with which I'm discovering purpose is the intensity with which I must pursue the issue of finding the right partner. I don't treat it as something less. I don't treat it as something insignificant. I don't treat it as something that I can just... Marriage is not something you... It's like buying a dress. You run across the road and just buy in case in all size you, you change her. Praise God. It's important. So we are going to be praying tonight. We are going to pray in a very simple prayer tonight. All of you that are already married here, let me see your hand. I'm married, let me see your hand. I'm married, let me see your hand. Praise God. Now let me tell you something. Those of you that are married... In God forging the issue of marriage, one of the things he had in mind is that your marriage will be a spoke in the eye of the devil. That your marriage, your coming together in union will be such that he can use you as an invincible tool against the powers of darkness. So if God wants to use two of you to deal with principalities and powers of evil. But two of you turn on each other in the house. You see that you have already lost the focus. You have a common enemy. But instead of you to face the enemy on the outside, two of you are fighting each other on the inside. You lost the focus. So I found out in the past 24 years of my marriage that one thing that keeps a marriage strong is an understanding that this marriage is not just about sex. This marriage is not just about having children. This marriage is not just about cooking food, putting food on the table. This marriage is about the fulfillment of purpose. This marriage is about destiny. This marriage is about God's agenda. So I always tell married people, two of you need to go back and sit down and say, what is this marriage supposed to be about, Seth? What are we supposed to pursue together as a team? For some marriages, God brought you people together to be kingdom financiers. You put money in your hand, you finance the kingdom, issues of the kingdom. But where there is no agreement, you find out that this, that team cannot work well. So as we pray tonight, we are going to be praying, all the single people you are going to be praying, that God, the wisdom that you are releasing, I receive grace to use it. It won't just be material in my notebook. I receive grace to use it. Do you know one of the prayers we are going to pray between now and next month is this. Do you know you can get to the point where you have handled issues with God that the very first day your eye falls on the person you should marry, you will know. It will just be to go and clarify. But you will just know that this is the person. Amen. And are you able to pray that kind of prayer? That cause such a clarity that when my eye falls on the person, I will know. Just be to and clarify issues. Lift up your two hands to the Lord tonight. Just lift your hands. Father, thank you. Can you thank God for his wisdom that he has made available to you tonight? Every one of you, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice and thank God for his word tonight.
This message was brought to you by Morningstar Christian Center. Worry.